To start making your LAB, the first step is collecting your rice wash water. And if you have ever washed rice before, you already know about this stuff. If you haven't washed your rice, you should because it improves the quality, culinarily speaking, in my opinion. I've got a cup here and I'm gonna cook that for dinner tonight. Just go ahead and add one cup of dechlorinated filtered water and then we're gonna mix it up with our hands really good. I like to mix this up with my hands for at least a minute so that I kind of get a ton of the starch off of the rice. Once you've got a really cloudy liquid, you can strain it off using your fine mesh strainer or you can be really adventurous and you can just wing it, kind of pour it willy-nilly. For cooking rice, by the way, I like to wash mine a minimum of two times, sometimes three, because even more starch will come off and that stuff is gonna gum up your rice. It also potentially contains some really nasty heavy metals and other residue, but that's beside the point. Now take a look at this liquid. This is a simple carbohydrate-rich, low nutrient food source for bacteria. Now where do the bacteria come from? Well, they're pretty much everywhere. They're in the starch already because they're on the surface of the rice grains. There are also a small number of bacteria just floating through the air that will incorporate themselves. But the real trick here is that once you've collected this starch water, it's going to start culturing, fermenting. The bacteria, specifically the lactic acid bacteria, are going to start consuming the starch. And then they will take over the liquid from other oxygen-loving species and yeasts. So you let this sit for a few days, covered with its breathable lid, and then after a few days, it will start to get a little bit tangy in the smell. The temperature range needs to be around the upper 60s and higher if possible. Much hotter than the 90s and the lactic acid bacteria will struggle and the brew might spoil. Again, this is a very low risk ferment. If you're, you're spending pretty much no money here, it's just all the rice that you hopefully had on hand already. Once a few days have passed and you're starting to smell that tang, you also might see kind of a white film starting to develop on the surface. If there's colorful mold on the top of the rice water, you need to toss it and start over. But otherwise, you're ready to move on to step two, which is to diversify the culture. And to do that, you are going to need to feed them another food source. And this is where the milk comes in. Now, the main carbohydrate that they're consuming in the milk is lactose. Kind of makes sense. Lactic acid comes from fermented lactose, more or less. A lot of cheese comes from letting the native lactic acid bacteria in raw milk ferment on its own. But here, we're essentially just adding the cultured rice wash water to the milk. I usually do this in a one gallon or a half gallon quantity, which gives you a lot of LAB, probably enough for a whole season if you're using it for your home garden. A small upgrade that you can make here is just to use a turkey baster to extract the liquid from the jar and that way you don't get any of the starch residue that's settled on the bottom, but it doesn't really matter that much in my experience. And now you just wait another few days and you'll get a very visible indication of this being completed. The milk is gonna curdle. This is cheese making, like I said. The cheese curds separate from the whey and you can actually make this cheese curds into cheese with a bit more processing. Or if you'd rather not, you can just eat it plain or you can feed it to your chickens, other animals. Just don't toss it in the garbage at the very least compost it. The way that you get is your lactic acid bacteria serum. 